Welcome to the Cruise Dudes Podcast with your hosts, Tommy Allison and Scott Andrews. We celebrate the cruise vacation lifestyle. Got your passport and cruise card ready? Welcome aboard to our show. All right, this is Fred Gandy, and I invite you to join me for my podcast with the Cruise Dude. It also features Bernie Coppell, but it's mostly me. That's right. <laughs> uh, first off, cheers to you and a wonderful reunion. Uh, this week on the Discovery Princess, kind of I got a big my hit, ice. Right? It is kind fun- of a big hit. This is phenomenal. We've been remarking about that ourselves. Right? Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cruise Dudes Podcast. I have Fred Grandy, who played Burl Gopher Smith on the Love Boat, and Bernie Capel, who played Doctor Adam Doc Bricker. How are you doing? Welcome to the po- podcast. Doing very well. Doing. We had such fun yesterday, and just uh, going over some of our experiences that turned out to be pretty funny. Even even Fred was funny. Yeah, but just when I did the serious stuff, um, it's amazing. I think the show has been off the air for what? Almost forty years? Yeah, yeah thirty was, something years. It, yeah, it's been forty-five years. Okay, listen. For, okay. Since the beginning of the show. Yeah, it's the beginning and of the show. I'm talking about but the end of the show. Years, you know, normally when yeah. shows end, they end. They may go into some syndication. This thing is still running everywhere. I mean, I get a check from ten for ten dollars from Zimbabwe every so often. <laughs> but the more amazing thing to me is the turnout on this ship of fans who aren't just grateful. But devoted, yes. I would almost say ravenous. After you know what we were two and a half hours signing autographs yesterday, Some I can right actually had tears in their eyes, seeing us being being near us, and I I, I ran out of Kleenex. <laughs> we should have bought more Kleenex. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I agree. No, but it the was, effect, of the, the effect of this show on people was, I think, beyond our wildest imaginations. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because we've been coming into people's homes for all these years. Yes. And they would sit around with their families. Yes. And everybody would feel good because we have... These days, when people, people come into your home, it's usually to repossess something, not, 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 not us. We're essentially giving back. Oh, absolutely. My, my sons are ravenous fans, and they're 30 and 36 years old, and uh, they love it. They love looking at just the the past and no. seeing the past re, you know uh, stories of the past you're making you're making a very interesting point here um, because obviously this line this company is interested in expanding its demographic yep and i don't think until we did this cruise and this gathering that they believe perhaps that all of these septuagenarians and and altar cockers who are you know reun reuniting on this i've called you more than that many times sit down shut up anyway um now i've lost my train of thought anyway no what what i'm saying is i i think they did not anticipate um the kind of youth that you're talking about yes generations that have got this show in reruns and are still interested in in cruising right and and so it seems to me that the love boat is just siring newer and newer generations i mean I, you'd know about more about this than we yeah. would but but you don't have to be 65 plus right to come on this thing right right well i think or in know, his case 165 <laughs> well you know our family is, did a is fred still here y- yeah fred is still here pain yeah <laughs> So, I'm a great fan of yours. Oh, yeah. You're a great fan. <laughs> my 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 family uh, back in 2016, we took 32 of us on an Alaskan cruise on the Ruby Princess, and you know what? Everyone in the family just adored that ship and adored um, all the activities, the food, the entertainment. And, you know, it, it brings families together, well, Bernie, you know. Bernie has two kids, young, young men who are on this cruise. My daughter is 34. She'd never been on a cruise, unlike my older kids. And, and they are, I think, part of that generation. Because your kids were born pretty much when you were, when you were nearing the end of the show, right? Near the end of my life. Oh, no, okay, yeah. 
<laughs> my condolences You're to pathetic. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, so that gives you an idea, and they're having a great time, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I don't don't just tell me you have to be old and toothless to enjoy these kinds of Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Although in Bernie's case, it helps. Yeah. <laughs> We're very close. We're very close. Okay. So, what do you think Gavin would have thought about everything that happened this week? Well, were it not for Gavin, we wouldn't be here. I mean, quite yes. honestly, Gavin's. Uh, tenure with Princess is three times what it was on the love boat. Yes. And he felt very strongly about this and mm-hmm. felt very, you know, Gavin was one of these guys who if he decided to do something, he was going to give 100%. Yeah. He was never going to phone it in. And so he was one of the biggest cheerleaders for cruising and, of course, specifically Princess. Right. So he, he would say... Spokesperson. Yeah. Spokesperson for this cruise years. line. Yes. And, and he, you know, he would have said, I told you so. I told you, they're going to love this show. Amazing job. Yeah. You know, Gavin thought the show was going to be a hit when we never did. Wow. None of us really thought the show would survive. The television critics vilified it. Yeah. And and the network was not that keen on it. They put it at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, which is generally considered to be a graveyard shift. Yeah. And, of course, it took off almost immediately. If I may make a point. Yeah. There was another show that, uh, that Spelling had. The San Pedro Beach Bums, and they said, because we had made two pilots right. that did not go. The, the first captain was a very handsome uh, Australian guy, but I think, wait a second, he was he was a model, he was not a captain, right. but a very handsome guy. The second one, so that didn't go, the, the second one was a fellow who wrote and acted in uh, soap operas. That didn't go. Now Spelling is a little annoyed because he's spending all this money with ABC's money. And he said, he said, I think we'd like to make one more pilot. And they said, you're not going to spend any more money on cruise ships. They said, do it on the Queen Mary. And we did. And that's when Gavin came and became our, our leader, our fearless leader. So that was... Something that might not have happened right. if he said, okay, make another, make another one. <laughs> but they said, they said the Love Boat has had all of these attempts and failed, but San Pedro Beach Bums has got success written all over it. <laughs> well, but, and that went bye-bye. Yeah. And we but, of course, the imprimatur of Aaron Spelling meant something to the network. I mean, ABC right. used to be known as Aaron's Broadcasting oh, yeah. Company. So if he embraced the show, and it was his idea to bring Gavin on and to hire Lauren, um, the network stat- stood back and said, okay. But Bernie's right. I mean, they did the show as a favor to him. They thought San Pedro Beach Bums, which was like a, 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 new, a new Bowery Boys, as if yeah. we needed that, um, was going to be a, a runaway hit. Right. It ran away, but it wasn't a hit. <laughs> it ran away. Bye. <laughs> Well, do you have a favorite fan interaction that happened this week? Oh, yes. The, the, the people, our guests, were up against the back wall. Everybody on the, on the ship wanted to be with us, yeah. and they were. And yeah. that makes you feel very good when whatever you're doing gets a big audience. Yes. With, yes. with a lovely response. Yeah. There are two women on this ship named Aaron and Joey. I don't know their last names. And they have, uh, through obviously no encouragement of us, because we didn't know them, made for us tote bags with our name and our character name on it, little cards that reproduce all of us in a a lovely little caricature. And, And they just keep showering us with gifts. And that's almost indicative of yes. what the rest of the response has been like. I mean, people are coming up to us and saying thank you the way you thank your pastor at the end of a service. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, all right, this is maybe more responsibility than I want. But it tells you the impact right. of the show over now generations yes. and the power it, it bestowed to the cruise line industry. Yeah, and here's, here's one other thing that I, I just thought about this when we were in Puerto Vallarta the other day. 
When we first to go down, used to go down to Puerto Vallarta, Puerto Vallarta was nothing. You're it, right. It, yeah. it was, you get off the ship, there was a mariachi band, guys <laughs> with donkeys, and kids diving off a pier for money. Right. With Bernie, <laughs> who was older and faster. Um, I think I beat a few of them. <laughs> yeah. And I got, I got a lot of quarters. It was yeah, great. Yeah. Well, I hope you put it in your retirement fund. But, <laughs> but you know what, Port, Port of Art yeah. is a metropolis now. Oh, yeah, it has a Walmart, a Costco. Not only that, Starbucks. it looks like Rodeo Drive it when you does. go. I mean, it, it's, it's astonishing. Right. And, and that is, of course, the residual benefit of cruise industries, not just Princess, but right. all the derivatives that have come um, afterwards. Right in terms of essentially highlighting the Mexican Riviera. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I really believe that the Love Boat and Princess Cruises changed the tr uh, cruise travel industry. Uh, and what do you think is the secret to this phenomenal su success? Listen to him, he'll tell you exactly. We show people how easy it is to cruise. You pack and unpack once. And you go, it, and the world comes to you. You don't go to the world. Right. And you say, oh, here we are in this place, and here we are in that place. But the the uh, the essence was it used to be just Mexico, 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 and then somebody whispered in Aaron Spelling's ear, Aaron, we're a hit. We can go other places. <laughs> then we went to the Caribbean, the Mediterranean. Middle East, Far East, Scandinavia. Yes. We went all over the world. Right. So we can get a good seat in any restaurant anywhere. That's that's a, that's phenomenal. I'm from I'm from the Midwest. Yes. And and I can tell you definitively because I saw the numbers. Once the show was established on the air, whenever there was a blizzard, it would go up twenty points in Omaha. <laughs> Because the escapism was something that you could only get vicariously. Right. And yet people gravitated to that. And here's the other thing, and you, can, you won't see this on television anymore. Families watched this show. They gathered around the television yes. set. And they watched it with their nana or their mom or their dad. And they just, they just bonded over the show. And, they, and, of course, this was before the Travel Channel or any of the now multiple... Uh, resources you have to download travel information. Right. Back then we were it. We were it. And right. the fact of the matter was people said, oh my God, they're in Alaska. Look at that glacier. Oh my God, they're in the Mediterranean. Right. Oh my God, they're in Egypt, the pyramids. Okay. So, I mean, it's just, it was, it was a phenomenon that of course the critics never understood. But Gavin did, and Aaron did, and eventually we did. The critics eventually came around. Yes. And they said, all these people love the show. It must be pretty darn good. Right, right. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you uh, to, for uh, coming on to the podcast and sharing with us. And uh, we look forward to maybe hopefully another reunion cruise in the future. But thank you. Dr. Bricker, and thank you, Gopher. Uh, I'll only do it if he's not involved. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you for coming on to the Cruise News Podcast. But we podcast. love one another. Yeah, absolutely. We were very close. <laughs> we were. I can't oh remember gosh. when. Oh, my gosh. Yes, we love you. Thank you very much. All right.